Okay. So, what we have so far is we have our definition of work, which is FB cosine theta. We have a definition of kinetic energy, which is one half mv squared. And we also have a very, very important theorem, which is the work kinetic energy theorem, and uh, which says simply that the work done by all the forces combined is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. So let us apply all the concepts to a problem and uh, yeah, let's see how to apply this. So here's, here's an example. Um, okay, so here's the example. What we're going to do is we're going to take an, an object on a surface. Let's start with a simple example. So an object on a, on a surface and let us say that we are going to exert a force of 100 newtons on this object let's say its mass is 10 kg and let us say that initially this object is moving at 10 meters per second and uh, just to keep with the theme of the number 10 let's also say that the object slides a distance of 10 meters and our goal is to figure out the speed of the object at the end of the 10 meters by using the work kinetic energy theorem so somewhere along here, when the object has traveled 10 meters, we are asking, hey, what is the final speed of this object? So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out, we're going to do all this using the work kinetic energy theorem. Now, let us assume that the friction in this problem is zero. Okay, there's the simple problem. Let's try to keep it as simple as possible right now. So what we'll do is we'll find the work done. We'll find the kinetic energy initial. We Then from the work kinetic energy theorem, we can find the final kinetic energy. And then we can find the speed of the object. So the task, the you know, a, a, the task is going to be very simple. Let's find the work done. And in this case, we realize that there is only one force that is doing work, the 100 Newton force. Contact and gravity are doing zero work. And the reason that's happening is because contact and gravity are both perpendicular with the displacement. The displacement is to the right. So the object is moving to the right. This is where the displacement is. And contact is pointing up and gravity is pointing down. And so they are both perpendicular, and we see that cosine of 90 happens to be zero, and so we don't have to worry about calculating the work done by either of them. So what we have is we have the work done simply by the 100 newton force, which is the net force, and which will end up being 100 times 10 times cosine of zero, which happens to be equal to 1,000 joule. Now that we have this. We, we, can plug, uh, we can plug it into our, our equation, but before that, let's just do one thing. Let's find KEI, and kinetic energy initially is equal to 1 half times 10 times 10 squared, which happens to be 500 joules. And what we're looking for is the final velocity, and in order to achieve that, let's find that kinetic energy final first. So let us plug everything into this. W equals KEF minus KEI, which implies that a thousand equals KEF minus 500. And so this tells me that the KEF is equal to 1,500 joules. Now, we know what KEF is, which is 1 half times 10 times VF squared. And this happens to be equal to 1,500 joules. And this ends up giving me Vf squared equals 300. And this now tells me that Vf is equal to square root of 300. And this is the answer that we see. Okay, so this is a simple application of the problem. Uh, the key steps here is to recognize that we first found the work done by the 100 newton force, then we found the initial. Um, kinetic energy and then by using the kinet work kinetic energy theorem we figured out what the final kinetic energy would be and then from there we figured out the final velocity of the object. Okay? So in the next problem we'll look at a slightly more involved case where there may be several forces acting on the object and then we'll apply the work kinetic energy theorem to figure out uh, once again you know either the final speed or some other unknown on the problem. Alright that's it for this one.